Hey, Work Positive Nation. Seems like everywhere I go and everyone I talk with, I hear this same concern and the same question. The concern is this. Finding top talent or any talent these days. The question, how do you attract top talent? My guest on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast knows your concern and can answer your question. Her new book, Higher, Higher, provides invaluable insights on how to identify and attract top talent. She discusses her new book and so much more, like best practices for onboarding for long-term success. She discusses all that with us today. Ready to attract top talent and reduce team turnover? Then lean in, listen up, and learn how you can create a work-positive culture. Welcome to the Work Positive Podcast with your host, executive coach and culture architect, Dr. Joey Fawcett. Discover strategies and tactics that work positive as Dr. Joey talks with industry leaders who create a positive work culture that attracts top talent and reduces team turnover. Discover how you can create a work positive culture that increases productivity and profits. Here's your host, Dr. Joey. Work Positive Nation, help me welcome to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast, Andrea Hoffer. Andrea, welcome to the Work Positive Podcast. Thank you, Joey. I'm so excited to be here. I am delighted to have you on. By the way, just in case you're wondering, Andrea has her own podcast, Makers and Movers. She interviews founders of manufacturing companies and how they put together incredible teams. So uh, wherever finer podcasts are heard, just like this one. So wherever you're listening to this one, be sure and check out Makers and Movers. It's amazing. I love hearing founder stories. Don't you, Andrea? I do. It's, It's always very inspiring. Oh, it really is. Yeah. And so many of these things were first conceived on the back of a napkin, which is part of why I love them. You know? Our business plan was on a napkin. Mm, yeah. And a McDonald's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you are an expert. And in fact, AHA Talent Experts is your company, which can be found at ahatalentexperts.com. Uh, you're an expert in solving what I think is one of the number one problems we're experiencing in human resources today. And that has to do with talent. Yes. How do you find them? How do you get them? How do you keep them? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of the big question today and everywhere I go, I don't care whether I'm in a B and I meeting locally or whether I'm working with an executive for a large corporation on another continent. It's the same thing. Uh, all about how do we attract top talent. And Andrea, I've got to tell you, some of these people are just looking for any kind of talent. You know, we're just looking for some talent, somebody who has the certification that this job requires. So it seems like uh, work culture might get sorted to the back of the line oftentimes because we're just looking for a body in here who can who can do some work. So your book, Hire, Hire, that's right, H-I-R-E, H-I-G-H-E-R, which you can go to right now while you're listening to this podcast at HigherHigherBook.com. In your book, Higher Higher, you talk about this talent attraction factor that is such a dilemma for us today. Let's begin by talking about what I think is an important difference, and I know you do too, between trying to sell somebody on taking a position or recruiting somebody into a position versus attracting top talent. What are the distinctions between, for you, Andrea, between recruiting and selling somebody into a position and attracting top talent? Mm, that's an interesting way of asking that question. The first thing I like to say is attracting talent, building a talent pool is a long game. Mm. You have a long game and a short game because you do have your immediate talent needs, mm. but you need to always be looking to the future. And in doing that, you want to first discover who you are as an employer and learn about what do you have to offer as an employer? What is your culture like? What are your core values? Who's going to be a good fit for your company? And by drilling that down, then you can put material out there on social media, on offering free workshops, 
all different ways to attract future talent to your brand. So they start to think about you as an employer of choice. So there's employer branding where you're building that up. You're, you're getting out there as what you're like as an employer. And then there's direct marketing when you have a position available. So if you do the long game of continuing to build the employer brand, then when you have a position, you already have a talent pool to, to plug into. And so the longer game is where you start to attract that talent. Mm, longer game. I like that distinction. So you have an immediate need, but you fill that immediate need by playing that longer game. And that is creating um, an image of yourself as an employer of choice. What are some of those key qualities that you see working really well for companies out there today in terms of positioning themselves as an employer of choice? Well, first thing, it needs to be authentic. You can't, yeah, I, I see so many. You can't lie to people just to get them to come <laughs> no. to work for you, Andrea. <laughs> and, and you know, my favorite is whenever, uh, often when I get a new client and we're, we're doing our discovery process with them uh-huh. and, and I'll, you know, talk to them to, to pull out of them what's, what's unique about them as an employer. And the first thing I always says, we're like a family. I'm like, well, some people don't like their family. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's not always really? that may not be. <laughs> going to attract candidates. So you, <laughs> you want to figure out who, not just to attract people, but authentically a chat. Because if you say all of these wonderful things about yourself and it's not true, yeah. then it's going to hurt you in so many ways. And oh, you're not yeah. going to be able to, to keep any team members that Absolutely. You, you hire. Your back door is like 16 times the size of your front door then. So, <laughs> exactly. so Andre, I'm really glad to hear you say about family. So it's not just my family. It's your family too. <laughs> no, your no. Too. You know, <laughs> no I, my family's in the background here listening. Oh, so. okay. oh, <laughs> Andrea Hoffer has the best family in the world. Is that what I'm no, supposed to I say right now? I actually do. I actually do. <laughs> Well, you know, and, but I don't I mean, know if I'd want to work with them. <laughs> oh, my wife and I have been married 41 years. And one of our keys to the 41 years is not working together. <laughs> right? Even so, my, my sister, who we're extremely close and spend yeah. a lot of time together. But, we, you know, she in particular, she's like, we can never work together. <laughs> I'm very, we I have different you. approaches to work. It doesn't mean any either one is correct. It just means we have different approaches. So we probably also would attract different types of talent. Exactly. So there's family of birth and family of choice. So that word family can mean a couple of different things. So how do you help those clients move beyond we're like a family? Because they they could mean, you know, we're close to each other. We enjoy working with each other. You know, we're fun to work with. But that word family doesn't necessarily carry that connotation for everybody. Uh, Dysfunction might be what some of us think about. But so how do you help them move beyond and and communicate that better image? Well, first, we ask them a lot of questions (laughs) And, and we record it. And so we might ask things like, you know, think about the best employee you ever had. Uh, Tell us about them. Share stories. We love stories. So we ask for story after story so that we can start to see a theme. Mm. You know, what, what are the behaviors that we're seeing over and over that seem to be good for this employer that, that makes these employees successful and mm. happy mm. in their company? Mm. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's as simple as that being fast paced, their company is extremely fast paced, maybe a little chaotic. And some people are going to be very successful in that type of culture. And other people are not going to survive even the first week. Mm. So you want to be upfront about that, right in your posting and everything you put out there to show the type of culture that you have. So it's not just about, hey, we treat you well and we're like a family. I mean, that's great. You do want to treat everybody well and respect, you know, be respectful. Mm. But at the same time, you act a certain way. You have a certain dynamic in your company that works for everybody who's there or they end up leaving. So make that clear. Let people Mm. know what is it really like to work here. And if it deters them, great. Then you're not wasting each other's time. If it attracts them, all the better. 
So it sounds like job one and step one is for me to know about my company. And so you ask clarifying questions that help me identify that culture more. And then it would seem like step two would be then communicating that culture well. What are some ways that you've seen successful companies communicate their culture? Video is a big one. Yeah. If you have any kind of behind the scenes, an office, maybe it's a factory that you can do a little video to, to give people an idea of what it's like to work there. Uh, one company I follow a lot is L'Oreal, and they do some great videos, not just on what their culture is like on the day to day, but also on how to be a successful candidate. That's another thing. If you can do a whole series about what we look for, how to prepare for our interviews, it, some some employers get antsy about that and say, well, they should know. They should figure it out themselves. <laughs> like, well, they, they can't always. But if you're putting the information out there and they actually view it and mm-hmm. put effort into it, then to me, that shows they're a good person to consider to, to join your team. Absolutely. They, you yeah. know, if they don't watch it, that's a, another thing. It tells you but, something um, also, right? But I, yeah. I guess that would be, that attitude would be like going out on a first date and expecting somebody to stalk you before you ever get there without <laughs> asking you any questions or anything, right? You know, I know <laughs> your dog's name's Toto, right? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. what, kind of, what kind of way to do business is that? But anyway, I love that. So we can actually say but these are not episodes of The Office, though. <laughs> we actually want to put out good promotional. Yeah, again, you want to be authentic. Well, you know, actually, if part of your culture is humor, huh. if that if that is a strong part of your culture, add that to your videos. Show that in everything that you do, and it will attract people who who find that to be a place they want to work. Um, so that? I should put out blooper reels from podcast as a way of attracting top talent. <laughs> no, that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> the, the other thing that we we always do with our clients is we ask our clients, typically the CEO, mm-hmm. to do a short video. And we give them kind of like a template of a script, but we want them to talk from the heart. Yeah. And for them to just talk less than a minute, sometimes 30 seconds is plenty about what they're looking for, what their culture is like, you know, just thanking the candidate for being interested. And we use that when we go out and recruit. And I, you know, I recommend it whether you're using recruiter or not, use it as a way for people to connect with you right away. Cause it's, you know, you're only one person. Um, and if you want them to connect with the CEO or with one of the leaders in in the company, it's it's a great way to start that connection immediately. You make it more human that way, right? So I'm not just mm-hmm. filling out a, a jot form or something. I'm I'm actually learning something about the people who work there. I love that. That's absolutely wonderful. So that's that's that long game. It seems to me, Andrea, that we'd want to do that long game on a consistent basis. Yes, you do. And in that video of the CEO that I just talked about, we actually do that in, I guess, what you would call the short game when you have a, an immediate, I mean, you could do it both, sure. but the one that we show to candidates, to people mm-hmm. who actually show an interest in mm-hmm. the position that's opening before we have them do any interviews, we have them watch the video up from the CEO. And so we found that by doing that, they connect with the culture and with the CEO immediately, or they don't. And the quality of our conversations with the candidates have skyrocketed. We started doing it a few years ago, and, mm. but it, it, the quality is so much higher than them just reading the job posting prior yeah, to so it. From the company's perspective, I'm thinking that that's like qualifying your candidates for them to watch that video and then respond. So that cuts down on the, on the time spent in the process. Right. Oh, definitely. And we, you know, so they, the candidates then respond on a one way video, they can do it within their own time, but it's so much more personal because first they see the CEO and that's how we get a, 
a good response on those one-way video interviews is because the CEO is saying, hey, I hate doing this too. <laughs> you know, it is not easy just <laughs> looking at yourself on a camera, on a phone, on a computer yeah. and answer questions. Uh, but I appreciate that you're going to do it and I can't wait to watch your video. You know, even something as simple as that, it, mm. it connects you with with the candidates. Yeah. So there's the authenticity, there's the vulnerability, the transparency. Yeah. That, that's a really cool way of thinking about it. So really you're, you're, this is a part attracting top talent. It's gotta be a part of your brand messaging then. Yes. Yeah. Every, it's all a part of your employer brand. And often companies will spend a lot of time on their company brand, mm -hmm. which I always think of as the heart of the company. You know, just how you connect um, with your consumers. The employer brand is very similar. It's the heart of the company, but on the work side, on the talent side, it's what you offer your your employees, your talent. It's who you are as a team. Mm -hmm. And so, it is important to to know what that is. And yeah, I, I you know, I was I used to say the biggest mistake that I have seen over the years has been that whenever somebody needs to fill a job, they just go to Indeed or one of the job boards, they search for a similar job title and copy that posting, <laughs> not really making any changes to it, just saying, oh, this sounds really good and yeah. reposting it. Uh -huh. That's and, so authentic, isn't it? Right. And, <laughs> and it could be a great posting, but for that company <laughs> and that position, and then they wonder why they're they hire the wrong people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and that, that theme, that error of the theme, I'm seeing it go over into AI um, as well. We use AI a lot. Now it just makes our lives so much more productive, yeah. but we use it still in bringing that authenticity in. So mm -hmm. that theme of just copying a posting online, now I see people going into AI and just saying, here's my job title, create a job posting for me without giving it any good, authentic information. Uh -huh. So, it's, you know, we're just kind of perpetuating the same mistakes just in a different technology. But mm -hmm. I think AI is great for discovery to help with you figuring out what your employer brand is. And we we work a lot with our clients on still interviewing them, taking the transcript of the interview where they authentically answer these questions and share things. And then we put it into AI and we spend a couple of hours almost communicating with the transcript. Really, it is communicating with the transcript yeah. from, you know, the discovery process and then we, we come up with the candidate persona. Mm -hmm. And then we start to develop the, the posting and, and the, the branding materials. So it does make it easier or streamlines it to use AI as long as you're using it in a way where you're entering. And entering might not be the right word, but well, it is really. You yeah. know, you're, yeah. you're, you're sharing with the AI your right. information. And sometimes when we talk, we're more authentic than when we write. And you can yeah. you can do that with chat GPT or or Claude. Right. Yeah. You can even do it on your phone. Record right. yourself and then copy the transcript and put it into whatever AI tool you like to use. Absolutely. Because AI is really good at I think of it as a first draft. So it, it gets you started. But in terms of the unique nuances of your company and the brand messaging you want to put out there and talk about your teams, I mean, that's human to human at the end of the day, right? Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Andrea Hoffer has written a book. It's called Hire, Hire. That's right. I said it again. H-I-R-E, <laughs> Hire. Higher, like above and beyond. And and so if you want to right now, while we're chatting, go over to higherhigherbook.com and get yourself a copy. Um, boy, there's all kinds of great information like this and so much more in that book. Andrea, let's say that I've attracted top talent. Okay. And we've gone through this process that you've described so, so well. It's authentic. It's transparent. We, we feel like there's a good culture fit as well as a good technical task fit here for us. 
What happens then? Because sometimes, not that this has ever happened to me, sometimes you get dated really hard, right? And and you hear all the right things and then you get married and it's like, I'm sorry, who are you? Uh, right? You, you, you just, you, it's very true. Yeah, they, they walk away. You, you don't even know where the coffee pot is, right? If you're in a physical space or... How, you know, what is the etiquette uh, online or Teams or Zoom for us? You know, you, you just get dropped. So describe for us some best practices in the onboarding and beyond process. First thing is you want to think of everything you need to do to set your new hire up for success. And and I actually even still refer back to Maslow, Maslow's um, theory, you know, the, yeah, the bottom of his pyramid right. is all about the basic needs. And sometimes if it's on site, it could be, where do I go to the bathroom? Where are the local yeah. restaurants? What do I do? Am I allowed to leave for lunch? Like, you know, those basic things, what do I wear on my first day? Make sure all the basic things are, are covered and that you leave that space open so they know they can ask. Because that you need to make sure that there's somebody that they can approach very easily. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's remote, which we're seeing more and more, I just actually hired a new salesperson, an account exec who starts on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in a couple of days, you, you know, you still want to make sure they have everything they need and they know where do they show up. And at what time <laughs> on the mm-hmm, first day? Mm-hmm. And do I use my own up? laptop or are you going to buy me one, right? right. <laughs> exactly. I always put that in the offer, actually, uh-huh. <laughs> of, that, of how that works. Um, so, you know, you just want to make sure the basic things are there and you want to make sure they feel like they belong. So you, mm-hmm. you, you want to integrate, make sure they're meeting different people on the team. They know what each person does, encourage the team to reach out to them even before they start. That's a mistake I see often. So you do this search, you put so much effort into it. You find this amazing person. Sometimes they need to give, you know, a month's notice that, you know, if it's a higher level job, they may yeah. need a little bit of time right. to wrap up their previous job. Mm -hmm. So you just figure, okay, we'll be ready for them in the month. Did you send them a welcome gift? Did you check in with them? Make sure they're still, you know, excited about the job. Anything that you can do to keep that momentum going, because you don't know what's going to happen during that month or even two weeks. Somebody, they might not be actively searching. They probably aren't. But they were actively searching prior, or they may have been, Mm -hmm. or they're sought after. So somebody's going to reach out to them. So you want to make sure you're keeping that, that momentum going. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond the, that belongingness, you also want to make sure they have all the tools they need, you know, for their job and keep checking in with them. I would say, you know, sometimes I, I speak with, employers and they say there's so much you have to know to be successful with a team and to keep them happy. And, you know, I had an employer a few weeks ago who said that she's like, I'm just so overwhelmed. I feel like there's so much I need to know and do regularly and I, I'm not doing it. And I said, just go to the basics. Just make sure you're checking in with with your new hire regularly and asking them, do you have everything you need today or need this week to be successful? You know, what are you having challenges with this week? What What are you curious about? How can I make your job easier? Mm. And then as they, you know, as they grow, also continue to talk about their career growth, because that's what a lot of employees now are looking for is What's my next step and how, how do I get there? Mm. And sometimes it's not with your company. And I think that is something we all need to accept, you know, and to not take it personally. And, you know, we're seeing tenure, especially at that mid to executive level. If somebody stays for three years, that that's a pretty long tenure these days. I know that, you know, for someone who stayed at a job for in the same place for 12 years at the beginning of her career, <laughs> you know, for somebody only staying three, it, it, it took me a while 
to accept that. But when, as you start to get to that second year, you know, with that new employee, make sure that you're still challenging them and you're still helping them with where their next step is. Mm. And if you have that open communication with them, you'll know, are they looking to move up in your company? And do you have that available for them? Or is it something they're looking for outside? And then at least you can prepare for it. Right. right. And sometimes they're the best referral source for the next person in that that position. Absolutely. Because then they'll want their family to come work. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Uh, boy, what a great testimonial when you say to your friends, you should come work for the Ackman Corporation with me or whatever company yes. it is. Andrea Hoffer is my guest on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Andrea, we can go to ahatalentexperts.com and learn more. So when we go there, what are we going to discover? We are a full talent agency. So we work with small businesses and mid-market businesses and once in a blue moon, even larger companies. We're, we're open to that as well. But we offer full executive search. We also offer contract staffing and we offer consulting. We have a full recruitment, marketing, employer branding services. We have lots of clients who especially our small business who just take advantage of that part. And we also help companies to build their hiring process. So we we are here just to help you to be more successful in your hiring and to keep your employees is with you and happy. Wonderful. So attracting top talent, reducing team turnover. That's what you find at ahatalentexperts.com. <laughs> and then hirehirebook.com is where you can learn even more. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you directly, either of those sites is a great way to do that, Andrea. Yes. And, and actually, my LinkedIn profile is probably one of the best ways. I'm very active on yeah. LinkedIn. Uh, I talk a lot about employer branding. On, on LinkedIn. So if you want <laughs> okay. some tidbits there, uh, just right. look me up there and I'd, I'd love to to talk with you. Wonderful. That, in fact, is how Andrea and I met was through LinkedIn. So be there in that new town square and talk about all things employment, right? <laughs> Andrea, Work Positive Nation always wants to know from my guest, what's one thing? So Andrea Hoffer, what's your one thing that you would say to Work Positive Nation, start doing this today to create a positive work culture? Okay, I'm going to be a little unique. <laughs> well, it may not be unique, but I'm going to bring AI into this. Sweet. So I always say, whenever somebody asks me this question, I always say, get to know who you are as employer. Okay. I think AI can help you if you take your phone and just start talking about your core values and and what they are as much as you can and then put it into chat gpt or claude and start to communicate with it and ask it questions like well what are the good behaviors that would come up for this core value how can i recognize how can i observe whether or not somebody's living this core value and then ask them the opposite and what will tell me that they're not living this core value? And that will start to give you language to more fully communicate what your your culture is all about. Of course, you have to check to make sure it agrees with you and it is authentic. Uh -huh. Sometimes I find that people just have trouble putting words to what they're looking for, which then makes it even more difficult to look for it and to measure it. And this, I, I find AI really, AI really helps with that. Mm, wonderful. Wonderful. That's a great one thing. Andrea Hoffer is my guest on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Go right now to AHA. AHA. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, AHA TalentExperts.com. Or you can go to HireHireBook.com and you can get to know Andrea better over on LinkedIn, which is how we met. Thank you so much. I absolutely love what we've learned here today. We've leaned in, we've learned, we've listened, and uh, you certainly have helped us discover more about how to attract top talent and reduce team turnover. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, Andrea. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed your questions. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. 
please share this podcast with your friends who are HR and small business leaders so they can do one thing today to create a positive work culture that increases productivity and profits. I'd like to give you a free work positive course just for listening. It's called Something to Talk About, and it's transformed the work conversations of so many people all over the world. Get your free copy when you go to workpositive.today slash something to talk about, and you can start transforming your conversations today. Remember, it pays to work positive.